Welcome back. We are here with the great one and only Jacob Darth Cafeteria. Mm. Uh, Jacob Hughes Creative, welcome. Thank you so much for jumping in the chair today and have a little bit of a sit down with me. You're welcome, brother. Um, we're here to talk all things political markets. I love political markets. Political markets. So the state of the political market at the moment is mm. that we need to fix your hair. Talk mm. to me, what haircut do you are, are you after today? So we're in the middle of transitioning from a skin fade to the flop to the side, but we think we might try to go straight back, a bit more symmetry. Yep. That's what we're trying to get. For sure. So we're going to have to like grow out these sections just a little bit to cut the weight there, which yeah. is totally fine. But we, I can make it happen. We'll get involved with that, hey? What do you reckon? Are we gonna, good, we're going to keep the length on top and just fade it up on the sides. I need all the length I can get. So give me a little blurb of who you are, brother. Well, not necessarily, because like, I know who you are, but for the little audience there, just so they're not like, who's this guy? Mm. Right. Is, yeah. Okay. So if you were to read a back of a book, right? what is a Jacob Shoes creative back of the book blurb? You know my name, not my story. And that's it? Well, that makes you want to read it, right? That's very true. Mm. Very, very true. Now, I guess we'll start by saying that I am a professional photographer, mainly shooting weddings, and that, that's where you'll find me most of the time. But outside of that, I work in marketing in real estate on the Central Coast. And other than that, I am a dad every other day and night. And a beautiful dad at that. Thank you, sir. What made you want to get into the creative industry as a photographer? That's a good one. That's a good one because not many people know this side of me. So I started in the water, right? Like I grew up around Bado Bay surfing and that sort of thing. But the problem was I wasn't very good. A lot of my friends were very, very, very good. So I didn't want to miss out when the surf was massive and they wanted to charge it, but I was a little bit worried. I'd still want to go out there and just kind of be around that energy and witness those beautiful things. And then some of the things I saw was like really hard to explain to people that aren't otherwise around that. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could like take some photos or videos of what I can see from putting myself in these situations and bring it to those people who don't otherwise get to experience or see those things, if mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And it started with one of those Panasonic Lumix Tough cameras. Yeah. I reckon it was about five megapixels and probably couldn't do video. But back then it's probably like super high quality kind oh, of Oh, like this thing was like three or four hundred bucks and it was massive for me to get something like that. I was yeah. so excited. Got everyone new MySpace profile pictures back in the day. And then I think GoPro came out. So then I jumped on the GoPros and just the perspective that gave me and what I was able to bring back to other people and seeing their reactions. You know, people were stoked to see it, they loved it, and it motivated me to want to keep doing more like that. Yeah. But then, kind of like evolution of how we were fishies and allegedly came onto land and grew feet and stuff, it's the same as me with my photography. Started in the water, worked my way onto land. I had a mate who um, was an accountant or a financial advisor or something who needed new headshots. And he was the first person I ever took photos of, like of a human that wasn't in the water. Give me some time stamp here. How long ago was this? How many um, years, roughly? I'd say about nine years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So you went from the water to doing then headshots, professional yeah, headshots, yeah? professional headshots here and there. And it was, I feel like I'm going to do some defamation on my name here, but I was surprised about how easy it was. Um, no, that's all right. Maybe, yeah. just, maybe you just have the, the thing for it, you know? Like sometimes when you start something new, mm. it can be daunting, but if you kind of go in with kind of the feeling of a bit of confidence, it's like, oh, this actually is a lot easier than I've built up and built yeah. it up to be, right? Something I always say to people is, um, I'm, I don't feel that I have a natural born ability in anything that I do. So the more you know me, you realize how much I do. Like I love my music too, right? Like I love playing guitar and piano and drums and pretty much anything I can get my hands on I'll try to play but there isn't one instrument or hobby that I've done that I've just picked it up and been able to do it really really well to start with like it's taken me time and practice and discipline to get good at those things yeah and it's the same with photography I guess but I think of most things that's probably come the most naturally to me so you moved from doing headshots then when was your first wedding yeah so i joined some as i grew a little bit more confident i joined some central coast photography facebook pages i remember some dude put a post up saying sos we need someone to shoot my mom's wedding uh, at nora head this week I've only got like 60 bucks and all the comments were writing him off saying like you're a joke no one's gonna do that like haha very funny and I was like yeah I'll do it yeah <laughs> I was nervous as fuck and um I was I just remember being so sweaty and so shaky like back then I had one camera one lens one battery one memory card and everything 
never posed a couple or anything and um, I don't know I was really lucky because that couple were naturally pretty vibey and energetic and they made it very easy I don't know I guess that kind of gave me the bug like I loved it I got a little taste of it small wedding ceremony and it was really cool to go do that and get paid for it. Did then. you tell them that was your first wedding? No. Or you just kind of said, yeah, yeah, no, I've done yeah, weddings no, before. I do this all the time, for sure. you got to, um, it's definitely that fake it till you make it type thing. Because at the end of the day, like, I feel like, especially getting into talking a little bit about weddings, if you go in there kind of nervous, it's going to make the couple nervous, right? So you want to try and make a couple more relaxed. Correct. Confident that you do what you do, so then you can get the good photos, right? That's right. And, and a lot of that false kind of confidence was definitely carried me the first few years of weddings, like, I used to stay up so nervous the night before weddings, looking up just wedding photos on Instagram and like Tumblr and stuff and um, just getting posing ideas and I'd screenshot ideas, I'd write down like a shot list for the couple and I felt like that added to my pressure like on the day itself if I wasn't executing that preconceived ideas of photos I felt like I wasn't doing a good job and it wasn't until I got more experience where I realized you need to leave the space for the couples to bring their own energy and their own vibes to a shoot. You just need to be able to create like a, I guess that environment for them to be comfortable and to be themselves. Yeah. To add that to the photo, if that makes sense. Like yeah. they'll bring the flair, they'll bring the personality, Definitely. you just provide the space. Because I feel like if you were to kind of pose them all the, the same, it kind of just makes it look like a bit of a copycat. And, and the, the, the key factor, I guess, is when you're doing photos over and over again for weddings is, is like, yeah, sometimes it may be repetitive for us yeah. in the way of timelines, but what the key factor or what the difference is the couple, right? Correct. So if you be able to make them more comfortable, be themselves, that's the unique part of the whole day, right? Absolutely, and I've kind of thought about this before. So if you check me out, you'll notice that the number one venue that I shoot on the Central Coast for weddings is Nora Head Lighthouse. Sometimes when I shoot weddings at that lighthouse, because I've been doing it for so long, I feel like I get stuck sometimes and I'm like, I've kind of done this shot before and I've done it before, I've done it before, but even though I might have done similar shots in you know, the same places over and over again, for that couple, it's the very first time for them. And that'll be the key unique difference in the photos, like their unique smile or quirks or what they're wearing or the weather on the day adds that bit of, I guess, originality to that. Mm, definitely. But I do like to challenge myself to, if I shoot the same place a thousand times, like I want to find new angles and places. The more I shoot it, I don't want to get too comfortable and I love challenging myself, I guess, as an artist to find those new places and angles. Yeah. That's what makes you so good. So, talking about weddings, mm -hmm. why have you wanted to like dive more into doing them? Like, why have you committed to just the, like, well, not say niche, but mm -hmm. like, you know, that's your selected kind of career path when it comes to photos? Yeah, well, I guess that um, one of the things that I've heard growing up, and I think it was my dad that first told me something like this, is he mentioned that a career is like a summation of all the jobs you've ever done kind of rolled into one. All the experience you've learned out of the jobs you've had in various industries and years of experience rolled into the one career type thing. And I believe with wedding photography, it's like that. So when you do wedding photography, if you want to put that in like quotation marks, it's not just portraits, it's it's landscape photography, it's sports photography, it's macro photography, it's astro photography, it's, for me, I also get in the water, so it can incorporate some of my like surf and underwater photography, and you know mm. what I mean, it combines all these aspects, family shoots, like couple shoots, architecture stuff, like real estate stuff, it's all rolled into the one, and I love not being limited to any one kind of type of photography, but being constantly challenged every single day and situation, like every minute of a wedding, you have to have all of this, I guess, knowledge in your head about photography, and yeah, again, I just love that challenge as a creative yeah, that's to awesome. see what comes out of me. That's a good analogy um, mm. from your dad there, and then tying that into yeah, your career, which is really cool. So it's all those collective experiences compi like compounding, mm. and over the years, the more you do, the better you get, and the further you kind of go. Um, what's your favorite thing about shooting weddings? Or if you could name, say, three things, if you can't just name one, yeah. what is your favorite thing? Like, I'm not ashamed to say I am a bit of a romantic. Like, some of my favorite movies are like The Notebook and shit. That's my top three. I love being around that love and that energy. And I think from a young age, like, I've always looked forward to being, you know, a father and a husband and being around the weddings and the, that energy and seeing these couples so in love and celebrating their union. Like, it's a pretty infectious energy to be around. And it just makes you, you leave weddings feeling so happy and um, inspired. So I guess that'd be one of the things I really like about it. 
I do really like working with people too, like on a wedding day, people show up their best, you know, like everyone's got a fresh haircut, girls have got their hair done, they've got their makeup done, they've got these beautiful dresses, the lads are all dressed up in suits and everyone's rocking up on their best and you get to be around that energy and just, I guess, what's the word from that? It's infectious as you said before too, yeah. and it's inspiring, it's good to be around yeah. that good energy, right? Like. Um, I totally understand it, of course, being in the same industry as yourself, but mm. it's uh, it's it's awesome, man. That's 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 such a key thing, especially if like if there are times when you're doing back-to-back -back weddings over and over again, it's kind of like it can get a bit like draining. But seeing that, seeing when people are stoked with your with your finished product, yeah, it's all worth it, you know. Yeah, and you just triggered me with something there, so that's right. So even after the day, you know, being photo or video like our jobs not even half done yet the day itself obviously is pretty taxing not just physically but because you need to show up with high energy and stuff like those who know me well know that I'm actually pretty introverted even though on socials and on a wedding day I seem the complete opposite but I'm naturally pretty quiet and I don't like people that much to be honest <laughs> so for me in particular I think I need to put on like a mask a lot of the time at weddings and become someone else but I love that like I love it's almost like a performance for me but it is definitely very draining and uh, after the wedding you know the come down from that everyone kind of comes down off that high like the couple themselves and everyone around you but then when you get to deliver them their photos back and seeing the reaction of like oh my goodness like you've done such an amazing job like you captured everything so perfectly we love it these are lifelong memories like it just makes you feel so valuable and like mm. validated in what you're doing yeah that's definitely motivating and inspiring to keep going and to keep doing it and to keep pushing if anyone's watching this uh planning a wedding or they've just booked their photographer or whatever it is what's in like maybe three key tips that you would say for them to kind of like plan for look out for expect mm -hmm. uh when you're getting wedding photos or dealing with a wedding photographer with me or in general just in general i feel what to look if out you can for... kind of relate to back to yours what to look out for, what to expect, and what was the other one? What to look out for, what to expect, yeah, working with a photographer, with a photographer? Uh, okay. to kind of get the best out of it, I guess. Yeah, all right, well, I think, so if you think about all the um, traditional wedding supplies you'll work with on your day, right? You've got like your dress, you've got the venue, you've got, if there is a venue coordinator or a wedding coordinator, you have like your florist, you might have your caterer, you might have the entertainment, whether that's a DJ or live music, musicians, or all of those things, your MC, your celebrant all those people are super valuable and super important on your day but the person you'll spend the most time with on your day is the photographer so I guess the first thing you want to look at before you even consider you know their photos and their style would be like their personality to see if it's going to vibe and gel with yours on the day because you spend a lot of time together you go through a lot of ups and downs like you see them stressed like as from my perspective I've seen brides crying and I've seen you know bits of drama here and there and you you kind of on the day as a photographer you're not just a photographer you end up becoming a coordinator in the day basically yeah sometimes yeah you just want to make sure you have someone who's confident in dealing with like various situations and confident in dealing with people and like hoarding people around and organizing things and you know that sort of thing first and that you're going to get along with them like as a friend as well and then second thing I guess is the style so a lot of photographers have their own unique style that they've taken years and years and years to develop um, something that they're passionate about putting their name on so you want to find something that kind of aligns with what you like and I think another good tip would be seeing like a whole wedding album from a photographer as well yeah. not just look at like the hero shot they put on Instagram but look at the whole album see how they've dealt with various situations and different venues and different weather yeah. conditions and just to see that they're going to be able to deal with anything that gets thrown their way so good so good so good I slightly want to touch on you being a dad hey quickly love cool. being a dad I love being a dad yeah so I kind of mentioned before that since a young age like I think since like a young teenager I've looked forward to being a dad and that was because I'm the youngest in my family I've got an older sister and older brother I loved having a big brother and I always wondered what it would be like from his perspective in having a little brother and as I got older I realized I always thought that naturally everyone just becomes a big brother that you always mm. like your mum and dad just keep having kids and yeah. just doesn't stop yeah so I guess as I got a bit older I was like I don't think this is gonna happen I think this is the end of the line for me yeah. So then after realizing I wouldn't be a big brother, the next logical thing would be being like a, a father. I became a father very young. I was 22 when my daughter Violet was born. Mm -hmm. So I think when I had my daughter, I definitely wasn't ready. I was only, I was working at Coles. I had dropped out of university, starting to be a primary school teacher. 
and I was doing a little bit of DJing and this sort of thing and as soon as I found out I was becoming a dad it really gave me a kick up the ass to get my life in order and it really motivated me to become I guess a man quicker than I was ready to mm. so I could be a better father and in the first couple of years of having her I went back to uni I finished my degree I became a primary school teacher I just felt like I got my life on track a lot quicker. I tried to improve my health and I made a lot of sacrifices so I could be present in those early years of her life and I still am to this day. Like she's always number one for me. I've been able to build my kind of career so that I don't have to work full time and I can be with her like yeah. pretty much every day if I need to. And I guess she just motivates me every day to do better. Like every decision I make, I make with her in mind. My only real philosophy is as a parent, right, is regardless of what's going on in your life with where you live and how much money you earn, whatever's going on. If, if your kid goes to sleep smiling, I think that you're a good parent. Mm, mm, 100. That was a big philosophy for me as well, was if I can make my daughter smile more than she cries, I'm good. You succeed. You succeed. But yeah, man, going back on that advice that you're talking about, especially with uh, couples booking, wanting to book uh, a photographer, videographer, whatever mm, it is, especially yeah. to capture their day. Being someone that's in that industry as well, and we've worked quite a lot together, mm. man, I'm sure there's like some more advice. Like, what, what do you feel like, especially that we've we've had discussions, especially between going to the wedding and coming home from the wedding? Like, yeah, what do you feel like we could add? Uh, yeah, so definitely photo video packages are becoming more and more and more popular. They went quiet for a while, but now they're coming in hot. And my advice to couples out there, if you are looking for a photo video combo, is not to hire a photographer and then go and look for a videographer and hire a, a separate videographer and just assume they'll work really good on the day. Cause for us as your wedding suppliers, that's almost like a blind date. Like we have developed our own process on the day of how we like to shoot things and how we like to run things. And so has that other person. So if you hire two people with separate processes and separate ways they like to do things and you put them together, there could be a chance of them clashing on the day. So it is really, really good if you can find people who offer packages or for people that you know work really, really well together and have that mm. chemistry on the day just to make your day a little bit easier and your experience yeah. um, a lot better because we can kind of synthesize what we do. So that's why it's good. With yeah. Jacob Hughes Creative, I've been able to find people like yourself, Kratiba Weddings and um, Jordan, who's Crotison on Instagram and a few other people that I've started working with to grow a bit of a team so that we can gel together and work really, really well together and deliver you the best quality product. The end goal at the end of the day is of course to capture the day as it unfolds but also to make you guys feel the most comfortable so yeah. being able to package up people that work together the celebrant or like if you've seen people work together in different things yeah. or if you have recommendations or like we send recommendations with people that we've worked with before works really well especially on the day so then you guys are comfortable we all know what's going on so I'm not, we're not just like oh you do this now and do that it's, yeah it's, it's just flows a lot better if you can make your day as stress less as possible makes the better photos possible. yeah biggest philosophy that i'm sure you might agree with as well too is when people look back at their photos there's an emotion attached to it and if they've had a shit day they've had a stressful day because mm. things didn't work out right they're going to look back at their photos even though they might be the best photos ever or bangers or whatever it is they're going to be like that was a stressful day they'll be thinking of that moment yeah well i love the idea of promoting other businesses like even in the same field as us like yeah. on a lot of wedding suppliers websites you'll see that they have a page saying recommended vendors like you mentioned before that they work with yeah. me as a photographer and a videographer as well i also recommend other photographers and videographers on my website yeah like i think good. it's good to promote other people as well so couples can just see who they like more and like who's going to gel with them the best. To be honest, and this goes out to any photographers out there or videographers, do not be scared to recommend other people mm. because the couple may like their other, the other style better. But yes, they might like your personality. But the biggest thing that I learned in business was don't hoard it all to yourself because if you were to per you're a person to kind of like, you know, if someone didn't like what I did and I said, hey, here's Jacob and they had a great time with Jacob, that's going to come back onto me being like, Nick yeah. was a legend. He like helped me out with Jacob. He was a that. facilitated yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it's a good name for you then as well. It's a good good energy yeah. for you as well. The most success I've had is um, you know, helping other people around me or giving them opportunities and stuff, and that's done like full circle back to me. It's like that karma thing. Yeah, it's amazing, hey. Yeah. It's amazing. But sometimes people get in their head and they think they want it all for themselves. Yeah. And it's it's not the case. A lot of people get married out there. They were kind of kept a bit more square there. We've just got to grow that part out a little bit more. It's always that part. It just yeah, it's because your hair is going a different direction. Yeah. But it just needs length. Yeah. Alrighty. Cool. Thank you so much.